Hey everyone, this is Leo with SVG Cuts, and in this video, we're going to discuss the process of importing SVG files into the new Cricut Design Space version 2.0, which was just recently updated as of around February 16th, 2015. Now, first and foremost, when you purchase or download a freebie or, or purchase a paid file from our website, regardless, it's going to come in zip format, which you can see here on the desktop. And before you can actually use those files, we do need to unzip the zip file. Now, on a Mac computer, by default, your, your default browser is going to be Safari. And unless you've edited the preferences in Safari, these downloads are going to end up in your downloads folder, okay, which you can access down here, or you can go to the Go menu and access it here. Now also, Safari typically takes zip files and automatically unzips them for you, okay, so you may not even need to unzip the file. But in case you do, in order to unzip the file, all you do is double click on the zip file and the Mac will automatically unzip the file. So this is what it looks like unzipped. We have it highlighted here and here is the zip file. Now you don't need to keep the zip file, okay? Uh, that's totally optional. It's pretty much redundant. You don't need it. You're not going to use it in design space. So after you unzip it, you can delete the zip file. Now if you're on a PC, depending on which browser you're using, typically the browser will also download all of our files, whether they're paid or free, into the downloads folder on a PC computer as well. So if you're running Windows 8, you're going to find the zip files in the downloads folder unless you've otherwise specified it to go somewhere else. And on a PC, we recommend that you right click on the file and do an extract all. Now, since I'm on a Mac, you're not going to see that option here. But again, you're going to do a right click and extract all to get the unzipped version. Okay, so the unzipped version is going to look like a folder on a PC. It's going to be a manila colored folder and you can double click on it to open it up and you'll see that there's a PDF file. Now in earlier versions of Design Space, this file was way more critical and it still may be a factor um, depending on uh, a lot of different scenarios. So we'll, we'll go back to that here in just a minute. And you'll also have a photograph of the completed projects as a whole. And then you have your folder full of SVG files. Now these are the files that you're going to use in Design Space. So let's head on over to Design Space. So here we are in Design Space. Now to begin the process of importing the file, you're going to need to click the Upload Images button. And since we're dealing with SVGs, you're going to click Upload Vector. We're going to Browse. And right now I'm already in the folder for the carousel, but let's go to the desktop and let's get you in there step by step. So here's the unzipped version of the carousel ride SVG kit. We're going to open that up. We're going to go into the SVG files folder and we're going to go into the carousel. And now you see here with the carousel, there are three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 total files. Each one of these will have to be imported in order for you to create the final um, project. And actually in this case, there's also a separate folder for the base. So these will also need to be imported. Now, keep in mind, this is probably one of the most complex projects on our website. Not all of them are gonna have this many files, but um, I did just so happen to pick one of the more complex files. Uh, so let's go ahead and open the first one. Now this is carousel1.svg, okay, and you can give it a name if you want, but as you can see, Design Space already takes the file name and puts it into what Design Space calls the image name. Now you can tag this by typing carousel ride SVG kit, and this is completely optional, and this just helps you kind of keep things organized. So we'll hit save. And basically to bring it up onto the mat, you just want to click on it and select it and hit insert images. Now before you do that, you may want to just go through the upload vector process and continue this process until you have them all in your library. So I'm going to do a couple here and show you why we would want to do that because it may actually go a little bit faster. Okay, so here's carousel three. We'll save that. And again, I'm just hitting browse 
and you would repeat the same process with all of these files. So let me just do one more and hit save. And now you'll see here that we've got one, two, three, all four that we've uploaded. Now in your case, when you're making this project, you're gonna import all of the files. And then while you're in here, you can click on these to select them. Okay, so we have four of them selected right now. And we're gonna click insert image or insert images since we're dealing with more than one. And it brought in all four. So let me just zoom out a little bit so we can move these around so you can kind of see them a little bit better. Let me zoom out even more since we've got a bunch of stuff here. Okay, so there's the four files. And again, since this one has a dozen or so files, you're gonna wanna bring them all in. So the main difference between the original version of Design Space and the new version of Design Space, which was just released uh, a day or two ago, is that the files import almost at the right size. Okay, so let me show you what I mean by that. Now before, in the earlier version, these files would come in at roughly 33% of the actual size or something along those lines. I could never really figure out the exact ratio, uh, but they are coming in almost at the right size. And let me show you how close. And in some cases, the files do come in at the exact size. So let me show you here. We're gonna, so we have this one highlighted, okay? We're gonna go to edit, and you'll notice that the width on this file is 11.39. Okay, so let me open up Shortcuts a lot four. Now, obviously, we've tested these files in uh, a lot of different programs, and I mean, we've discovered that, uh, well, initially, the original version of Design Space wasn't even close. This version is almost dead on okay so let me see what is the name of this file this is carousel 3 i believe yeah that's carousel 3 so let's go back into shortcuts a lot and let me bring up carousel 3 okay now carousel 3 when we import it into shortcuts a lot you can see that the width is actually 11.4 okay now in design space it's coming up at 11.39 now, after talking to Mary about this, she's told me that the 1 100th of an inch should not make or break the project. So, technically, you could probably cut this at the size that it imports at. And that's completely up to you. Uh, but again, you know, it should not make a difference as far as the actual assembly goes. But if it does, and you start to see a pattern where that 1 100th of an inch is causing some sort of discrepancy when you start putting things together, then obviously you're going to want to uh, look and reference the PDF file that comes with the download, which I'm accessing in the main folder here, okay? And so here's Carousel 3. We do have the exact dimensions listed under each piece. Uh, we don't think it's going to cause an issue, but um, you know we want you just to be informed and know that this is the discrepancy we're seeing here. And it's pretty consistent where it's just one one hundredth of an inch off. So in the case of the carousel, let's say you have all your pieces on the canvas here and you want to cut them. Now one additional step that you need to take before you cut the files is you need to attach the score lines. So any files, any of our files that have score lines, this one has score lines, you can see them here. This has score lines here, this has score lines here. You do need to attach these files, okay? So let me show you why. Now, if we don't attach them and hit go, the design space is gonna go ahead and prepare the mats. But as you can see here, the mats are actually, well, you can see the score lines are just kind of sitting in limbo and they're not attached to anything. Okay, now that's gonna be a problem. Uh, you don't want to try to cut the score lines on a separate mat that will not work. Okay, so let me close the go window. And again, what you need to do is you're gonna to need to highlight each of these elements. Anything that has a score line, you're gonna to need to highlight it and you can either highlight it by clicking here or what I like to do is so that I know where I am in this list here of all the files is I like to click on the name here in the gray row and click attach. Okay, so I'm gonna do that for carousel three. I'm gonna do that for carousel two and I'm gonna do that for carousel one, I'm clicking attach. And now when we hit go, you'll see that 
now all of a sudden, instead of having eight mats where the score lines are separated, we only have four with the actual design and the score lines all intact. So it's all gonna cut in one fell swoop. So again, if you do feel the need to adjust the values, all you need to do is just make sure that this little lock is locked here because as you adjust the width, you want to make sure that the height is adjusted proportionately. Okay, so we're gonna type in 11.4 and hit enter. And you see, as I did that, it didn't really do anything to this. It, it, it basically, it almost looked like it just kind of stood there in place. So again, I really don't think that this 1 100th of an inch is going to make a difference. Because uh, look, if we type in 11.39, which was the original size, and hit enter, it really didn't modify the size that much, which is what we expect when you're talking about 1 100th of an inch. So there you have it. If you do have any additional questions, feel free to contact us by visiting svgcuts.com and fill out the form under the Contact Us section.